Hey guys, this is Frozen Thing Studios here, and welcome back to another movie review. And today, I am finally going to be doing a review on the movie. You've all been waiting for me to see and uh, talk about ever since this movie uh, came out in cinemas. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is uh, the uh, third attempt at rebooting the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. Uh, the first time being the 2007 CG animated movie and the second time being uh, the Michael Bay uh, Ninja Turtles reboot zoology and uh, is uh, directed by um, and it's uh, directed by Jeff Rowway who uh, gave us uh, the Mitchells vs. the Machines, uh, which I still love that movie, and I might review that film one day, but I don't know when. And Skyler Spears, uh, who is a director I don't know about, but I don't think he did Mitchells vs. the Machines. But if he did direct it, let me know down below. And it stars a large uh, cast uh, that includes uh, Brandy Noon. Uh, Brandy Noon, uh, no, wait, no, wait, no, it stars. Uh, Brandy Noon, Nicholas Cantu, Shaman Brown, Ju- Shaman Brown Jr., Mac- Ma- Micah Abbey, Ayo Edebrey, Maya Rudolph, John Cena, Seth Rogen, uh, who is the producer of this movie, um, Rose Barron, uh, Giancarlo Esposito, Jackie Chan, Ice Cube, Paul Rudd, uh, Paul Rudd, uh, etc. And uh, so this movie tells a story of... Uh, Tell, tell us a story that, well, isn't an unoriginal story of the turtles like what you expected. Well, it kind of is an original story, but, well, a completely a different, uh, fresh, new uh, take on the story. So basically, the, tur- um, the turtles, you know, uh, I'm sure you know, like, the whole storyline about the turtles, uh, like, desperately want- wanting to uh, go out of the sewers, out of the shadows, and, and out of the sewers to see the world, but then Splinter is uh, very uh, strict at them. He uh, doesn't want uh, the turtles to... Uh, he doesn't want the turtles to uh, well to, to get exposed by humans like you know the humans to uh, see the turtles and, um, and, uh, and and so yeah the turtles do sneak out of the shadow out of the out of the sewers which makes the uh, sh- uh, splinter angry and, and, and then the turtles uh, encounter um, April and Neil and no, to no one's to no one's surprise one of the turtles actually seems on April and that is Leonardo. Well, thankfully, it's not. Uh, thankfully, it, it, they didn't go too far with it, unlike Michelangelo did in the uh, Ninja, in, uh, Ninja Turtles 2014. Um, and uh, and then th- this is where things get uh, v- different from uh, the other Ninja Turtles movies. So, so the, the, the Ninja Turtles uh, discover um, other mutants that, who are like them. Uh, you know, led by Superfly and the entire family that. Baxter Stockman created, but then there's a backstory that Baxter Stockman uh, was a- actually died, and now uh, and, and now Superfly and, and all of his brothers and sisters, so, like Superfly, raises on um, everyone, uh, and uh, so like Superfly, um, like for years now, Superfly, um, uh, who also like uh, has as much of of, of a hatred uh, towards the uh, humans as uh, Splinter does, uh, plans to to. Um, Get revenge in the humans so for uh, killing for uh, killing a uh, Baxter Stockman, and so he creates this whole like um, weapon to to uh, kill the humans, and and um, and the turtles do uh, the turtles, and also um, Superfly siblings who turns their backs on uh, Superfly must uh, work together to uh, stop him, and also the humans must uh, learn to accept these uh, to learn to accept the humans. Uh, and uh, Splinter learns that um, that Splinter learns that you know um, embracing the, the Splinter learns that you know um, trying to um, well I don't know I don't know how to put this word but Splinter learns that you know turning your backs on humans is not the, the right solution to do. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much a, a lot to take in. Uh, yeah, so. So yeah, I'm sure you all know the, the situation towards this film. I am like late to the party and not a lot of people are talking about this movie as of right now, yeah. Not a lot of people are talking about it because you know, when uh, when this movie first came out back in like three weeks ago, this movie got so much hype and ev- not, well, not everyone saw it thankfully. Uh, uh, no, wait, no, not thankfully. Uh, like, you know, lots of people saw it, well, saw it and talked about it, but then there are some people who actually didn't get to see this movie. It, it, didn't make as much money as expected. I thought that uh, this was going to be the highest uh, grossing movie of uh, 
August has played three, but no, instead the you want to know what the highest grossing movie of 2020, August 2023 is? It's Meg to the Trash. Oh boy, seriously. How did that the Shark Boom movie make money? I mean, I mean, Meg 2 uh, barely even had any marketing and yet the people went to see that garbage over this one. What a shame. And yeah, it, it actually really sucked that I, I had to wait three weeks until this movie uh, came out. Yeah, three whole weeks. And no, unlike the Super Mario Bros. movie, it wasn't really a movie where I was in, uh, where I was uh, in uh, such a hurry to see. Sorry about, sorry about the noise, guys. Uh, I don't know where it's coming from. But yeah, but yeah, unlike this, it wasn't really a movie that I was hurry to see. You know, hurry to see. Now, now to be honest, yes, I, as much as I was hyped for this movie, now I wasn't as hyped for it as other animation fans were. Yeah, sure, the trailer is no convincing, but you know. I was still excited for this movie, but there were just um, other movies I was more excited for. Like uh, there are other movies I was I, I was uh, personally more excited for, like uh, like um, Blue Beetle, which was my most anticipated movie of the of the month, and also kind of you know Gran Turismo. But you know this, but I think I'm um, my anticipation for Gran Turismo is uh, on par with uh, this one right here. So yeah. No, yeah, and yes, ever since this movie was first announced, I was like, really? Another T T Ninja Turtles reboot? Okay, let's see how this goes. But 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 it, but I was impressed by, by, by the teacher trailer and, th and this new take on the turtles. And I love that they, they used the, um, I love like, seeing the, anim the stylized animation, the, the Spider-Verse uh, animation style. Uh, I'm sure you know what I, what I mean by that. Uh, but but I, w I wasn't in like the phase of like, oh my god, this movie is going to be so good. Like, since you know it is Ninja Turtles, I'm Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I'm not really the biggest. I'm not really that big into Ninja Turtles. I am a huge fan of the Nickelodeon show. I'm a huge fan of Nickelodeon show. Um, but I haven't seen any other uh, THP the Ninja Turtles uh, media um, besides the theatrical movies. And a true THP the Ninja Turtles fans would see everything on Ninja Turtles related, and even maybe get the comics. But to me, I didn't see any of the Netflix straight to Netflix Ninja Turtles movie. The only ones I saw were like anything that reached the theaters. The original trilogy, the 2007 anime, CG animated movie, and the two Michael Bay ones, which I saw in theaters. And um, the 2012 Nickelodeon show, which, which introduced me to this world. Now, I was going to review um, the Ninja Turtles 2012 show, but unfortunately, I had no time to do it. Because, you know, I was going to do it last night, but then I, I just got too tired. I was like, okay, I don't think I can do this anymore. But if you're wondering what my thoughts on the 2012 Nickelodeon show are, I think it is it is um, just amazing. It's oh, well, one of the best um, incarnations of, of the Ninja Turtles, and it's my second favorite Nickelodeon show. Second only, only to behind the SpongeBob SquarePants. And yeah, so that's my thoughts right there. But yeah, so yeah, but I got to see this movie today, and I actually saw this movie with my uh, college friends, uh, believe it or not, since you know. I had this whole three hour break uh, during lunch break and where I had nothing to do so I so you know me and my college friends you know went to like uh, the nearby mall like there's actually like a lot a, a, a couple of malls uh, near my college where you could just you know simply walk in there it takes like 10 minutes and stuff and so we went watch there and yeah and I gotta say man um, after seeing Ninja Turtles the Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem all I gotta say is Kawabanga this movie is exactly uh, no not exactly this movie literally surpassed my expectations yeah saying this movie lived up to the hype is an understatement because this movie surpassed it i didn't even expect that that, that this movie would be that good and i and and yes and i'm gonna say i think this might be my favorite uh, movie of august 2023 so far i still think ashoka is the best thing to come out of uh, I still think Ashoka is the best piece of media to, to come out this month, uh, no competition, but Ninja Turtles with uh, Mutant Mayhem is definitely second. And yes, this is no competition, the best uh, incarnation of the Ninja Turtles, and, of, and easily the best uh, Ninja Turtles movie. It's better than the 2012 Nickelodeon show, and uh, better than, uh, better than uh, the, um, the original 1990s movie. Uh, and, and yeah. That it's better than you know, anything else Ninja Turtles related. So yeah, what do I love about this movie exactly? What I say that makes this movie really good? Well, yeah. Um, well, yes. Um, now let's get into it. So yeah, 
first of all, yeah, let's talk about how uh, this is. Uh, let me just start by saying that this movie is the combat of Nickelodeon animation. Yeah, Nickelodeon has not made, made a good movie like at all recently. I mean, I think the last movie they made that, that I liked was um, the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water, which I thought. Oh wait, no. The, the last time I liked the Nickelodeon movie, oh wait, it's the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, Out of Shadows, which was the previous, uh, which was the previous uh, uh, no. Um, Ninja Turtles theatrical movie, but yeah, um, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting a Nickelodeon movie like like you know specifically the ones that, that came out in uh, in the other years like 2017, 2018. I, I might be forgetting something, but the last the last time I liked a Ninja Turtles uh, a Nickelodeon movie was the Out of Shadows, but you know Nickelodeon movies can't be easy. Garbage after garbage after garbage with Wonder Park. The SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run, which uh, yeah, I might do a rant on that movie one day, and um, rant on that movie one day. Paw Patrol the movie, which is the most overrated Nickelodeon movie, and the worst Nickelodeon movie I, I have ever seen. Last year's Paws of Fury: uh, The Legend of Hunk, which uh, is now officially now my worst movie of 2022. Um, it, the more I think about it. So, the more I think about it, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's worse than uh, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Um, but yeah, but Nickelodeon movies is officially back with making a good movie, yeah, and it is certainly in my top five most uh, top five favorite Nickelodeon movies. It's not quite the uh, Adventures of Tintin, Rang- uh, Rango, and the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, but it's certainly in my top five uh, for sure. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, but yeah, um, but even judging as a movie on its own without this being a Nickelodeon movie, everything about this movie works. But let's start off with you know, the obvious, uh, the animation. Yeah, uh, I'm sure like pretty much, you know, um, the world is pretty much obsessed with this, uh, you know, stylistic uh, Spider-Verse animation style lately. We got Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse lately, which, uh, which you know, revolutionized animation. And also I did the Spider-Verse, which, you know, made people like fall in love with these uh you know, um, like, you know, styles, and so, like, e- every time, uh, yeah, every time, you know, a new, uh, movie that, animated movie that ha- uses a stylized animation style, um, they would be high for it, and it'll instantly get praised, yeah, I have not, uh, heard a single, I have not heard, um, a single, like, you know, stylized, uh, animated film, uh, that, you know, got, you know, mixed reviews, like, like, got bad reviews, like, all, all of them got positive reviews, like, they were crazy about it. Although with this one, I heard some people say that this is actually the weakest uh, stylized. Um, people, some, I heard some people call this the weakest of these, the stylized animation style. Despite getting, a, despite you know this movie having a, a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, which by the way, this movie does not. Uh, this movie doesn't deserve to be higher um, on Rotten Tomatoes than Spider-Man Across the Spider Verse in my opinion. Which yeah, this has a 97 and Across the Spider Verse has a 95%. But yeah. Um, 95% yeah this movie it does did not uh, deserve uh, to be higher but yeah but but even with that there I heard some people saying it's it's just all right it's not but it's not great uh, and I also say, oh there's nothing special about this one but I can totally see where they're coming from and they think that this movie is nothing special it's, it's all right I mean but I think some people are a little too harsh towards this I mean yes I want to admit that that this is a, a little bit more uh Kid friendly. This is a little more kid friendly than you know the um, the, than the other incarnations. I mean, it's more kid friendly than the uh, 2007 than than uh, the the 2007 um, and the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movies combined. But that's not a problem to me. Yeah, um, it shouldn't have worked to be honest, but it, it certainly does work because you know you you um, wait, how do I say it? Yeah, I, I mean even if I'm with a more lighthearted kid friendly tone. It still works because you know this movie, and this movie you know just stands out from the rest. Just not ma- not because of the animation, but mainly because of the st- the way that they tell the story. Yes, so yes, um, it's the best looking Ninja Turtles movie. I love the animation. I love the animation to it. Um, like other stuff, and also it doesn't really go too much. It's not really that much like you know, like Spider Verse, like what's like what some would say. Like even if it does take inspiration in the Spider Verse, it does its own thing. Like with the animation style at the same time, and I like that. I I appreciated that. I appreciate that. Um, 
Yeah, um, what else, it, what else uh, can I talk about? So yeah. But yeah, this this is also the most fun I had with any Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah, this movie had such a fast pacing at you know just an hour and the thirty nine minutes, which is one of the shorter ones. Um, and, but but yeah, this movie is so much fun. There was a never a scene where where um, I was bored in. But yeah, to be honest, I also said that about the other shadows, and that movie was was just good but not great. Uh, this one right here was just just straight up great uh, throughout. Uh, yeah, it was just. Uh, straight up great uh, and uh, um what else okay and also let's talk about you know the teenage mutant ninja turtles aspect of this one yeah that yeah the characters yeah now one of the things that, that this movie was was praised for is how they portray uh, the ninja turtles themselves because they feel like actual teenagers so uh, yeah this yeah the, the turtles in this movie actually do feel like um real teenagers in this one they act like teenagers. They behave like teenagers. I feel like you know they, um, the, the writers that did some research on uh, how teens uh, behave and how, like they did some research about teenagers and applied this one. And I bet there are people who could actually um, relate to relate to um, the, the the Ninja Turtles because of, of how just how well how well that how well they're they're portrayed. I mean, I really love. Uh, this sub uh, portrayal of the Ninja Turtles uh, to me, and, and even the voice acting, like I, I love that the, they got they got actual kids to voice this one. Unlike in the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie, where they vo- they got real like legit adults to voice the teenagers, which isn't that much of a problem to me. But I think this one just, but when you think about you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this one just feels has the feel of it the most, uh, um, in my opinion. This one just has the the feel of uh, the Ninja Turtles, and each one just has you know some, just has you know something unique to say. I mean, they all have such unique uh, character development. Uh, um, with and I I can't believe I'd say this in never in a million years, but Mikey is a standout of the four turtles. Like I'm not I'm not even a Mikey fan. It's like I uh, especially um, in the 2014 movie. Y'all know how how I feel I felt about Mikey in that movie. Yeah. But yeah, Mikey in that movie is such a creep, and, 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 and he's super annoying and won't shut up. Um, but this Mikey is just adorable. And, and, and he has the most charm, and I know that Mikey is kind of the fan favorite Ninja Turtles. Like I've heard a lot of people say that Mikey is the best turtle. I hope it doesn't. Apply. I hope that the, 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 the Michael Bay movies don't apply. But 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 in this one, I can I can always see if you if you think that uh, Mikey is the best Ninja Turtle overall. I, I I still think that you know Raph is my favorite Ninja Turtle, but yeah, not gonna lie, he's probably the weakest. Of, um, Raph is probably the the weakest of the four uh, Ninja Turtles, but uh, it um, but it doesn't say much. I mean, he's 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 the weakest one, but he's, he's because you know, he doesn't just he just it's just that he doesn't have as much character to him as the other uh, Ninja Turtles. But it's still but Raph's characterization is still great as always. And they both have have the best chemistry um, out, out of all, out of all um, the, the the turtles. But there are other characters who stand out from the turtles. Well, like yeah, yeah, there are other characters I would say who pretty much stand out more. Like for example, Master Splinter. Which yeah, um, I actually saw it coming. I I, I knew it was gonna be coming. Um, coming. Master Splinter is. Uh, b- is, this is the best uh, incarnation of Master Splinter we've ever gotten. I mean, I love this uh, this uh, Splinter here. Um, I, I love uh, this Splinter. Like, maybe not as bad, not nearly as bad as as he was in uh, the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie, specifically the, 40, the 1941. But just with Jackie Chan's uh, voice performance alone, and just his characterization, this one, just learning how to be a a good father to the kids and. They don't just realizing that you know just uh, trying to avoid the humans is not the right solution because uh, you don't know who to trust and not um, yeah, that that's great characterization and, and I love the backstory. The backstory is one of the one of my favorite parts of this movie. One of my favorite parts, maybe my e- even my favorite part, but I like think on, on that because there are like so there there are so many great scenes in this one. Um, scenes in this one, um, yeah, but. Um, I love you know, um, Splinter's backstory. Like, uh, like, 
yeah, the back story is one of my favorite parts. I know I said it already, but yeah. Um, like, what I love about the backstory, first of all, it's told through Spinner's point of view, and and you know, it, it actually doesn't feel, feel it, it doesn't feel, feel like the same as uh, the the original. Like, it actually tried the the backstory actually was uh, kind of different. Uh, like, you know, um, like they, they never really explained the Spinner's origins. Uh, Every time you know a Ninja Turtles origin movie would tell, explain the backstory, it's not really told in uh, uh, how do I say this? And it's not really told. Uh, like they don't really explain Spinner's backstory. It's only like the Turtles' backstory. But this one, they uh, managed to. Uh, they actually managed to include Splinter. Like you know how uh, Splinter was just some street rat who um who got chased away, but by not only humans but animals as well, as as well and. And, and and one thing that makes this really different is it's just how Splinter uh, it's just how uh, Splinter uh, just uh, yeah um, it's just how um, wait how do I say it? yeah Splinter found the turtles um, inside a sewer already um, like you know unlike the others like they were taken they were like taken from the lab uh, according to the 2014 film I forgot what the turtles origin story was like in the um, 90 in the original 1990s movie but I'm sure it's I'm pretty sure it's different from this one. That's sort of um, all I know about this. But yeah, Splinter's backstory is, it's just very tragic. And yes, there's like, the tragic part of the story is when, you know, Splinter um, attempted to um, come out of uh, the sewers to uh, look, look, look at uh, Times Square in New York City. But then he gets attacked by, by the humans and oh boy. Like, it, like it's such a tragic backstory, like seeing, um, so you know the the humans like you know, fear him like like saying that oh he's a rat man and, and then and then look and then uh, Mr Beast and yes people Mr Beast made a cameo on this movie no joke yeah Mr Beast was like oh it's the turtle like all oh, their freaks uh, uh, like oh, like oh my god like you you really feel bad though for for these turtles you you you'd feel bad for them uh, that they uh, get rejected like that and they almost. Uh, they tried to kill Splinter, and it was worse than that. The baby turtles almost died. Like, like when when the Splinter drops drops uh, those uh, turtles, and and then uh, drops uh, those turtles, and then um, they would, um, and then they almost like killed off, and, and Splinter was in a panic. Yeah, you know what? On reflection, that's actually now my favorite scene in the film. Yeah, that is actually my favorite scene in the film in general. That backstory, yeah, amazing. And, and and Splinter's also, also hilarious as well. Like Splinter is also really funny. Like like for example, um, remember like that's that you know scene where uh, where he um, quote unquote brings the human world uh, and inside the sewers, and then he would be like, oh look, it's crit. Like and he brought like you know statues of, of uh, you no know, cut boards of uh, of, of the Christians like you know Chris Pine, Chris Pratt, and Chris Evans like. That scene, you know, like, and I, I was laughing so hard. That is by far the funniest scene in the film. It's not that no one talks about the scene, but everyone talks about that Mr. Beast cameo. I, I know, like, you know, Mr. Beast cameo is a surprise, but this one, like, those little you know, Chris's is so uh, really good, and, and especially, especially the fact that um, when like, he said that Chris Pine is the best Chris, um, is Chris Pine actually the best Chris? I, I get why people say that Chris Pine is the best Chris actor, but to be honest, in my opinion, uh, Chris Pratt is still the best uh, Chris. And yeah, I, I love that they call him Chris Pratt. But, like, but you know what? But my only nitpick with the scene though is that they they did not they did not include uh, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, so it kind of felt incomplete. Yeah, where was where was Chris Hemsworth in that scene? But, but it's hilarious. But as for the other characters, yeah. But as for the other characters. Superfly is better than, than uh, Shredder. There I said, yeah, yeah. He he actually has better mo. He actually has a real motivation, like why, like like with why he's doing it. And he felt more more of a real threat than uh, than Shredder, it, it, um, especially when he um, especially when uh, he uh, came came out uh, when he turned on Monster and and, and caused the uh, destruction in um in the world um caused the. Uh, destruction in the world um and then we also got um you know all the mutants like i don't remember um all the names but the ones i remember is bebop rocksteady uh the crocodile like a, a bunch of you know uh different you know um animals uh 
bunch of you know uh, different animals in that scene. Um, but by far the standout of uh, the the, uh, turn, the standout of all the um, the mutants is Mondo Gecko. Yep, played by Paul Rudd, the uh, AKA Ant Man himself. Uh, yep, uh, huge fan of Paul Rudd. I think he's such an under underappreciated actor, and I mean. I, I, and I mean, like, I, I just love this guy. Like, he's so cool, especially when he's like, dude, yeah, oh, dude, yeah. Like, that guy is just uh, really, like, and like he's so um, entertaining. Uh, yeah, he, he's really entertaining uh, in this movie. And I uh, really uh, like him. And I also do like the other villains, like, um, villains like, uh, like Cynthia Ostro, well, who is one of the weaker aspects of the film, but I like her uh, in this. Probably like, you know, I, I, won't, I, don't, I didn't love uh, Cynthia, but she's great in this movie. But my favorite character in this movie has to be April O'Neil. Yep, April. Now, yes, yeah, first of all, I, I'm pretty sure you might have saw my community post that defending April. Even though I haven't seen a film yet, I defended April because everyone's just saying, oh, this movie's woke. Why they make April black or fat? That is so disgraceful. Like, first of all, y'all are not only racist, but fat shaming. Like, why would you have uh, fat? Like, why would, like, first of all, like, can we all just stop going with, like, oh, if it's, if a character is black, it's woke. Can we just stop that? I mean, who cares if April is black? I mean, there's, like, there have been so many different versions of April. Like, you got, you know, the red hair April, which is um, used the most times. You got the black hair April in, in the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. Like, a, like you know, a, just a regular, like, person April, like, with just with black hair. We even got, you know, a black April um, before. Um, she's, this, this April is not the only one, you know, in uh, Rise of the Ninja Turtles. Um, in, in, in the MNT Rise of the Ninja Turtles, which I haven't seen yet, but, but I, I have heard that about April being black in this movie. And uh, yeah, I'm um, so calling up. So just hating April for being black. Uh, that is just unfair. I mean, who cares if April is not black or white? You, uh, like, I'm sick of people just being racist. And uh, and what's worse is that you know calling her fat is woke. Uh, apparently, like they they think that now fat is woke. So like like y'all seriously just uh, don't really, like seriously y'all just don't get understand what what woke is at this point. Like. People just just don't even know what woke means anymore. Like, if you're, if you're gonna call people like fat people woke, then yeah, then call me woke then because I'm fat. Yeah, I dare you call me woke. Uh, yeah, because I'm overweight as well. And yeah, might as well just call Ned from the from the Spider-Man Homecoming trilogy woke because he, because he's fat. Yeah, like that's just some um, weird logic. No, that's just people's logic nowadays. I'm I'm sick of it. And I will defend April to the day I die. This April, I think this is tied with the TMNT 2007 April as the, the, the best April. But when it comes to, you know, the, the character, the, the character of April, I think that this, this might be my, my favorite uh, version of April. But, you know, I think overall this and 2000, 2007 April are tied for me. What I love about April in this film is just like, how, like her character, like, I'll, like like I love the idea of, of making April just a kid, just a high school kid who is uh, dreaming of becoming a journalist, uh, journalist. And I myself, you know, kind of want to be a journalist, but mainly towards you know, entertainment journalists where I get to um, interview celebrities and stuff. But that's you know, I, I don't know if I'll actually do that. Um, but I'm, I'm I only like I only want the job option just to meet just to meet celebrities, especially my my favorite ones. Anyways, but you know, they're better job options, you know. I have other dreams, like more bigger dreams than that. Uh, bigger dream jobs. But but you know, a I love you know April just you know April's at that phase of just wanting to be a journalist, dreaming of becoming a journalist. Um instead of um instead of um being a instead of just already being a journalist and an adult. So I really love the idea and I wish we got more teen April. I think we got that in two thousand twelve, but I don't remember if April was, was exactly a teenager in that movie, but from what, from what I can recall, yeah, uh, April is, uh, well, young, quite young in 2012, but I'm not sure if exactly she was a teen. But, but also, one thing I love about April is that it's her relatability. I'm not, I can't really tell if, if I personally um, relate to April, but I'm sure people can. Like, 
people who basically um people people who basically like have this uh, passion for something but then passion for a job he or she wants to do but then you know gets um it'll get into a state gets into a fright so for something that, that gets worried that you know, something is trying to hold back like for example Avery wants to be a journalist but one day she was you know when she um but one day when April like tried to um have like you know a school uh, shooting news uh, behind the camera and but but then you know April like had this uh, stage fright like since he, she's on camera and everyone's viewing her like we see April's a stage fright as she like vomit there yeah she, she vomits but when she has straight stage fright and in that way her her vomiting is just wow i mean her let's say april's vomiting is memeable in a good way um in a good way. but uh, but yeah um the whole like premise of, of april um will, having stage fright is just um stage fright is just um like great character development and, and now april must overcome it like she beats her those and now she's like tra- writing papers. Now she writes. Uh, she is just a a paper journalist. And, but but probably the the best thing about April and and possibly the, the real reason as to why April is the best character in the movie is in the in the climax of the film where April ends up being the true hero of the movie. And no, it, it, it's not like you know the don't think it as like you know the, the live action uh, Ninja Turtles movie where April is technically the um, where. April is, is uh, technically um, the how do I say this? Um, where April is like the, the main character and, and, and takes away the focus of the turtles. The story is still about the turtles, but but April is just you know the real hero because you know she literally you know um, went behind the camera of, of, of an actual you know news channel, um tried to o- try to um, overcome her fears and said that and and, and, and there it uh, convinced the world. Uh, that April, no, convinced the world that the turtles and the mutants are not bad, and it's only Superfly who is the bad guy who needs to be stopped, and that resulted in the humans to help the turtles, so, to help the turtles. Um, just, the, I mean, um, that convinced the humans to help the turtles and the mutants save the day. Like, like it was so sweet when, in in that part where where the tur- where um where 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 the humans were like helping uh splinter like get up when he's falling and, and and then we will see where splinters of fear in his eyes where when he um had that where, where he had that you know uh flashback of uh where the the, the, the flashback of uh you know uh, you know that uh, the 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 flashback you know of of the time squares uh scene that i told you about uh, i talked about earlier that that i mentioned is my favorite scene in the film and i, and I stand by that yeah, that scene's amazing. Like, like that, that scene, like really, like shows the uh, character growth for humans and for uh, for Splinter. And no, and that's when Splinter realized that humans are actually not so bad after all. Nowhere near as bad as uh, Superfly make, makes them out to be. And that is just fantastic uh, character development right there. Um, character development right there. But yeah, so besides all, all the characters, um, like everything else in this movie is great. Yeah. The story is the story is amazing. Best by far the best plot in um, in, in this franchise. Uh, what I love about this plot is just simply the the message, the, like like the the different the different storytelling, like the, the different like how they told the story differently, and the and the message of uh, acceptance that you know um, that anyone uh, c- can be accepted, uh, even if, if um, no matter how different you are, and also like. Yeah, and also to add that, also try try not to like fear um, people. Like even if you know you're different, and then you um you're, you're different, don't try to just uh, shy away from from normal people who would uh, who um might like you know um ruin you, who who might you know um hate you because there's some good people in the world. There's there's good in the world. Like try to see the good in the world. That's the message that, that this movie was trying to to make. And also, this movie is, is hilarious. Yeah, I already mentioned some jokes in this one. But one thing I love about this movie is the pop culture references. Uh, oh boy, the pop culture references are amazing. Uh, like hilarious. And I know, you know a lot of times pop culture references are just you know uh, kind of like ruin the movie, like like take down the movie. But there's like so much you know. But in this one, there's like such great character development. No such you know pop culture references. Like, for example, there's a scene in the first half of the movie where um, the turtles were watching um, 
Ferris Bueller's Day Off at a drive-in, like, like not, not, not really a drive-in, but it is a drive-in showing, but they're, like, showing it through the roof, yeah. By the way, yeah, Ferris Bueller's, Bueller's Day Off is a, is a classic, and this movie makes me, makes me want to rewatch uh, Ferris Bueller's uh, Day Off. Uh, and uh, they even talk, and I'm sure there are others, like, oh, yeah. I love the use of uh, the, the, the pop songs from the 90s. Uh, even if, you know, this movie does feel like, feel like you know, in, in the modern age, obviously, it shows when, you know, the, the turtles and even Splinter would use their phones. And, like, they show, like, a lot of phones, a lot of technology used in this film. No, not counting the ones that are important, significant in the plot. I mean, like, te- realistic technology that, that we have now, like phones, t- tablets, you know, those stuff. And what probably, like, the best rep, but you know what made me really happy the most? Is that they mentioned the uh, end game in this one? They reference end game. Like there's there's a scene where um where that where oh! like there's a scene where where, where where they talk about you know Avengers end uh, end game. Like they talk about fucking Avengers end game, like something like that. And I, I I really love it. I was like I was like like I, when they mentioned end game in this movie, I had a huge uh, smile on my face, like huge mega smile on my face. Yeah, when they when they. Uh, Thought about the you know, um, end game in this one, and also the action scenes um, in this movie are amazing. Yeah, the, like there's not a lot of action scenes, uh, but when there's action scenes, like they are amazing. Like, like they're very intense. So even though this may have a more family friendly approach, it still has, has a dark moments and, and also quite violent at times. Now, if I have if I had um, an, any nitpick uh, for this movie. If I had you know, any a nitpick, well, I would say that uh, um, I would say um, honestly, um, I think this movie needed more backstory development because you, because you know, Giancarlo Esposito in this movie. I mean, like, let me hear me out. Giancarlo Esposito is forcing backstory stuff, man. And yeah, I wish that we that backstory stuff man didn't die in the first film. I wish that we got more uh, backstory stuff man screen time. Yeah, how. And so that um, Giancarlo Esposito could um, make use more of his talent, but that that's barely a flaw. That's just a nitpick. I'm, I'm okay with Dash's stuff, man. Uh, not uh, being in this movie much. So overall, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. It just keeps getting better the more I think about it. Uh, this movie is um, is amazing and literally surpassed my expectations. This is the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. The best uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Movie movie by far no competition yeah um and i would say that this is some um, in my top five favorite um animated movies of the year may ho- maybe it might be the list but we'll see yeah it's no experiment from the spire verse it's no um elemental not and no nemona but to be honest i actually enjoy this one i actually prefer this movie enjoy this one more than super the super mario bros movie so i'll say that so yeah this movie's a masterpiece i loved it and I, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys um, watch this have seen the film already, so I don't need to say I recommend you to go see this movie. But if you haven't seen this movie yet, where have you been? Oh, and also stay, stick around for the post credit scene. Like, the, that post credit scene is absolutely insane. Um, besides that, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Volume 3, a post credit scene with your know, um, main credit scene with your know, Rocket and the new Guardians of the Galaxy theme. This movie's post credit scene is, is probably my, my favorite post credit scene of the year. Like, like either this or the Guardians you won. So at 10, I'm gonna give um, Mutant Mayhem a 10 out of 10. Um, now, yes, I don't think this will make my top 10 favorite movies of 2023 list because there are better movies out there, but yeah. But for sure, it'll get an honorable mention. So also for my review of Mutant Mayhem, what is your opinion on this movie? Uh, do you agree with me that this is the best uh, Ninja Turtles movie, or do you still prefer the original, or are you one of those people who, who say that this movie is alright, or do you think this movie is a masterpiece? Comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my uh, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, movies ranking. Uh, so yeah, bye guys.